So another verb. Got you several verbs coming at you in these lessons. This verb is tener. Tener significa to have. It means to have. All right, so let's keep that up there so we keep it fresh on the mind. Tener significa to have. Well, we have three things that we can say with tener. But before we talk about those three things, let's talk about conjugating. Do you remember how to conjugate? Well, let me start with our verb. What was that step B? Remember, this was step A. What was this one right here? Do you remember? Think about it. When we conjugated the verb ser, what did we use to get to the conjugation? Right. Those were our pronombres personales, the, the subject pronouns. So that was our filter. That was what helped us get there. And our ending on the conjugated verb, well, let's see what comes out the other side. Whenever we use yo, the conjugation is tengo. Really, really important that we focus on the pronunciation here because that is not the dance tango. It's the verb I have. Tengo. I have. The to form, after we run it through our conjugation filter is tienes, tienes, the el, ella, usted form, tiene, the nosotros form, tenemos, and the ellos, ellas, ustedes form, tiene. So, if you want a number, this helps you remember the order. Remember, this is that template that I said we're going to use over and over and over again. And remember, everything one, two, three is one person. Everything four, five is more than one. Okay? So it's plural. All right, so that's how you get the conjugation of tener. You have tengo, tienes, tiene, tenemos, tiene. All right? That's your conjugation. Well, let's talk about those three things that we say with tener. Number one, really easy. If I tell you that the verb means to have, what do you think it relates to? Why do you think that, how, what can we say using this verb? Right, you can talk about the things that you own, the things that are in your hands at the moment. Tengo un marcador. Tengo un marcador. Yo tengo un marcador. So, posesión. Posesión, possession. Numero dos. Hmm, think about it. Some of you used it on your voice thread, talking about age, edad, edad. And the last one, obligación, obligación. What do you think it means? Exactly, it means obligation. It's a cognate. A cognate is a word that looks and sounds like its English translation. In Espanol, cognado. So examples are like computadora. You can know absolutely no Spanish in the world, and if I say the Spanish word computadora means what in English? Yeah, computer. If I were to say the Spanish word hospital means what in English? You'd say hospital. That's a cognate. All right, so these are the three things that we say using tener. I already gave you an example of one. Tengo un marcador. Tengo un marcador. Using edad, let's just talk about um, some person, all right? Let's say, uh, María. What's going to be the form of the verb that we use with, of tener, that we use with María? She's one person. Am I María? No. Are you María? No. Which one are we going to use? Right. Tiene. Maria. Tiene. And then we have to give a number. We have to give some number. All right? Let's just say Maria tiene 18 años. Maria 
María tiene 18 años. All right? That's our statement to give age. Notice we don't say I am 18 years. We don't say María is 18 years. We say María has 18 years. Now, really, really important about accent marks and tildes. Remember this little thing right here is called a tilde. Really, really important because if we remove it and we say María tiene 18 años, we're saying that she has 18 anuses. So your introductory introductory conversations that you're having and you, you might ask someone, ¿Cuántos años tienes? You've just asked them how many anuses they have and your conversation can get really, really awkward. So that's why pronunciation and the accent marks are extremely important. Extremely important. So let's talk about obligación. Obligación, we have to add one more word to our phrase. So we, let's talk about nosotros, we, nosotros somos estudiantes. We are students. So what is it that we have to do in order to make good grades? Study. All right. So let's say nosotros tenemos que estudiar. What have we added? Right. We've added this word right here. K is just about the most used, versatile word in the Spanish language. It is what helps us to make this phrase. If we just drop down here. Tener K. I'm sorry, that should be the space. K is how we show obligation. Tenemos que estudiar, we have to study. So, <clears throat> why did I not use yo up here, but I use nosotros down here? Why is that? Well, if you look up here in your conjugation chart, if you look at the conjugation of the verb, you'll notice that all of them have a specific position. One, tengo, dos, tiene. All right? If you look at that, the subject is implied in the verb. We don't have to always use yo, tengo, nosotros, tenemos. We don't have to. If I just say tengo, I know I'm talking about myself, and you know I'm talking about myself because that's the only form of the verb that corresponds with the yo. If I use tenemos, I've got to be talking about nosotros. If I use tienes, if I ask you the question, ¿cuántos años tienes? I'm asking you how many years you have, how old are you? So it only goes for you. Okay. This is the verb tener. Same thing applies with making it negative. If this was, you know, here I am, tengo un marcador. If I remove it, no tengo un marcador. No tengo marcador. No tengo un marcador. We've placed no in front of our verb to make it negative. Okay? That's how you make it negative. You can do that with any form. Okay. Well, hope this explanation of tener has helped you out. Hope it helps you to complete your activities in iLearn. And remember, of course, if you have any questions, you can always send me an email or give me a call. See you guys.